Have you had your laser for a while now and never cleaned it? Are you not sure where to start? This will be a guide to help you keep your Nova Series Thunder Laser clean and working properly. Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to State of Woods Cove. Today we're gonna go over how to properly clean and maintain your Nova Series Thunder Laser. Some of the things we're gonna have to go over are how to clean your honeycomb bed, your optical mirrors, the exhaust fan, and your catch tray. We'll also replace the water in your chiller and go over a preventative maintenance schedule. By following the steps in this video, your laser will run more efficiently and last longer. Before you get started cleaning your laser, be sure that the head is moved to the upper left-hand corner of your machine. That way it's out of the way and won't get damaged while cleaning. The first part we're gonna clean is the honeycomb bed. To do so, take out your key and open up the lowest access panel on the front of your machine. Turn on your machine and lower your bed to about center of the opening. Before removing your honeycomb bed, familiarize yourself a little bit with how the bed is currently sitting. Make sure that the bed and its components are properly aligned and seated now. The honeycomb rests directly on blades and locks into the frame with two indexing pins for sturdiness, even weight distribution, and repeatable accuracy. Once you understand how it's seated in the unit, you can take it off and remove it. Make sure that when you're ready, go ahead and lift it straight out from the reference pins under here, and then you can simply remove it. Carefully continue to remove the entire bed from the frame without hurting the lens in the back. Now we're gonna clean the honeycomb and the rails of the laser. We're gonna need a few items for this. I'm gonna use a heavy duty degreaser, like an oven cleaner, and a pressure washer with a wide angle nozzle. So we've taken the bed and the rails outside to do the pressure washing. What I'm gonna do is lean it up against this fence, or you can put it on boards or some saw horses. Take your degreaser and just liberally spray the entire bed and rails. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that sit for 30 to 40 minutes. Let that really soak in and, and eat away at that soot. Then we're gonna take our pressure washer and gently spray the entire area down, making sure that we're cleaning off any of the grease. Then we're gonna move the bed into the sunshine to help the bed dry off. It's very important to make sure your bed is entirely dry before it's replaced. If you have a leaf blower, you may use it to aid in the drying. I don't want this thing to rust, so just make sure that you really, really dry it before you put it back in your laser. While our bed is outside drying, we're gonna go ahead and take time to clean the laser. First, we're gonna clean out the catch tray of the laser. This is a simple task of just vacuuming it out, or you can actually remove it and dump it right into the trash can. If you need to, go ahead and get a wet rag and wipe down the entire tray. While you have a damp rag out, it is a good time to go ahead and wipe the entire machine. This will take some time, but it will help keep your machine looking clean and functioning correctly. Use your keys to unlock each panel and wipe around where the edge of each panel meets the body of the machine. Typically, there is a buildup of residue in the corners. If you see electrical components inside the panel, you open up, do not get anywhere near them with your damp rag. Another few places to clean on the machine are these filters for all the electrical panel fans. There's four on this unit, two on each side of the machine. All you're gonna do is simply grasp it. There's a little plastic cover on it and pull it off. There's gonna be a little felt type filter on there that you'll need to blow out with compressed air and then we'll just simply wipe all this off and clean this. Now over time, your inline exhaust fan is gonna get dirty. So I'm gonna show you how to clean that. A lot is determined by what type of material you're cutting is how quickly your fan's gonna get dirty. We cut a lot of acrylic, so I'll be interested to see how dirty this thing actually is. But keeping your fan clean is gonna help move more air out of your laser and help to keep those harmful fumes and smells out of your shop. Before we take this unit apart, make sure that the power is off of it. You can unplug it from the back of your laser. Secondly, we need to remove the clamps to the fan. Find the corresponding screwdriver and loosen the clamps. There is no need to completely unscrew these clamps, just enough to be able to slide the clamps off of those joints. Next, you will slide out the fan housing and bring it over to the work table. All right, I'm really impressed. It's really not all that dirty, but I do wanna go ahead and clean it now that I have it out. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow it out with compressed air, get all the little large debris out of there, and then what we're gonna use is a degreaser. I just got like 409 degreaser, but you can use any type of degreaser. Spray it in there and just wipe it off. I'm not gonna take it apart or anything. I'm just gonna reach as much of it as I can, get it nice and clean, and then we'll put it back on. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and replace the water in our chiller. Now the first thing obviously to do is to make sure that the power is off of everything. So the power off on the laser and go ahead and unplug the power going into the chiller. Now you're gonna want to go ahead and elevate your chiller off the floor so that we can put a bowl or a container underneath the drain pan. Remember that this chiller holds a lot of water. Depending on the size of your laser, will determine the amount of water that's in there that needs to be drained. Make sure your container is large enough to hold all the water. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and drain it. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the top fill cap from the chiller. And then remember this water can shoot out. So make sure that you have your container ready and farther out than just at the center of this little cap. So I'm gonna start removing it slowly. And then you're just gonna let that water completely drain out until it stops. Once the water is completely drained out, go ahead and replace the drain plug so that when you go to fill it, you don't have another mess on your hands. With that finished, we can move on to refilling the chiller. Now, depending on your ambient temperature in your workspace or if you're below freezing anytime, you may need to add some antifreeze to your chiller. There's a link in the description below for more information on what type and how much to use. To fill the chiller, we use distilled water for this process. Each size of laser requires a different amount of water. We have a 51 Nova 100 watt laser. We use one and a half gallons of water. Take a funnel and fill the chiller while you're looking at the gauge on the back. Fill it up to where it starts to be visible in the yellow full portion of the gauge. Plug in your laser and turn it on. This will allow the water to start flowing through the laser tube and the machine. Watch the gauge and make sure that the water level stays in the green normal portion of the gauge. If it is starting to drop, keep filling it up until it stays constant in the upper half of the green portion. Now that it's full, we need to check for air bubbles in the water lines and also in the laser tube. To do so, we're gonna to need to open the rear cover of the laser. First, we're gonna look into the tube to see if there's any air pockets that are trapped inside the tube. If you find an air pocket, locate the clear hose at the very end of the laser tube. Without touching the glass tube, squeeze the water hose a few times and watch the air pocket move from left to right or down the tube. Keep pressing until it's completely gone. One thing to make sure of is that your machine is level right to left and also front to back. This will aid in removing air bubbles. Now we're gonna go over one of the most critical and delicate processes of the maintenance procedure. Cleaning your optics can help keep your machine operating at peak and consistent performance. Dirty optics can lead to poor performance and failures. As you use your machine, you will start to gauge how often you will need to clean these. The optics are worth checking every day. We will not be going over how to align your lasers and your red dot. That's a video all in itself. A lens or mirror failure can be caused by several different issues, but they all can be avoided by regular maintenance. The buildup of soot or dust can prevent the laser beam from being passed evenly or powerfully from mirror to mirror. We are reflecting the laser beam off of three mirrors, and if they are dirty, then the light source or the laser beam won't be able to travel from mirror to mirror. This will hurt our cut power and even our direction of the laser at the lens. When it comes to cleaning all of your optics, there's five areas we really wanna concentrate on. There are three mirrors, the lens at the head, and then there is a what we call a beam splitter coming off for the red dot laser. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these mirrors and lenses and clean them. Now, a lot of times you can clean them if they're not really that bad from them just staying in their housings. But when you got your machine, you, you came with a little metal piece that I call a key. And what we're gonna do is remove these mirrors to clean them. The cool thing about these machines is that when we remove these mirrors, it's not gonna affect anything with the alignment of your laser mirrors. All you're doing is removing them from the housing. The housings can stay where they are. For this process, you will need some cleaning swabs, dust-free cloth, and the cleaning solution. All of these came in your toolbox that came with your machine. First, you're gonna inspect the mirrors closely and determine how dirty the mirrors are. Like we said, if it's not too dirty, you could get away with cleaning these right in their housing. Take the swab and in a circular motion, work from the inside out and wipe the mirror. And before the solution dries, take your dry cloth and wipe it clean. Again, it's important not to use paper towels. If the mirrors are really dirty, go ahead and remove them from the housing. You're gonna use that little metal key that came in your toolbox 
and unscrew the retaining washer that holds the mirror in place. Make sure to be careful with these lenses as you don't want to drop them or scratch them. Also be careful not to turn or adjust any of the adjustment knobs that are actually the alignment pins for these mirrors. The other thing that can greatly affect the laser is how dirty the lens is down here at the laser head. This can get a lot of soot or dust from your cut material, which builds up around the hole where the laser exits this head. This will reduce the quality of the cut and the power of the laser. Keeping these items clean regularly can prevent all this. I wanna go ahead and clean the head of the unit. So I'm gonna pull the air line out and then unscrew it and remove the whole head assembly. Then we can take it to the bench and unscrew everything and get the lens that's inside here nice and clean. Now that the head and the tube are separated, we need to remove the lens from the head. To do so, take your flat metal lens removal tool and place it in the head and engage the two slots, which will allow you to unscrew the retaining washer. Before you take the lens out, make sure to keep the lens oriented in the correct way. The dome side of the lens will always be up. You can clean the lens just like you would any of the other lenses. Remember, don't use paper towels. Then repeat the steps in reverse to reassemble. The next thing that we need to accomplish is to lubricate the X and Y axis rails and also the four Z axis screws that raise and lower the bed. This is something that you wanna do every month. All you need for this process is a lubricating oil and a rust preventative grease and a brush or a way to apply it evenly. To lubricate your X and Y rails, locate the silver rails that are located atop each axis. If they are caked with dirty grease, take a rag with some degreaser and wipe them clean. Finally, take your brush and dab some lubricating oil onto the brush and brush it on. Make sure to cover the entire rail, but do not over oil the rails, use it sparingly. As you apply the oil, move each axis with the controller to spread the oil along the rails and also the bearings that ride on the rails. Now we are gonna move on to oiling the Z axis screws that lower and raise the honeycomb bed. Just like the rails on the X and the Y, if the screws are dirty, just wipe them clean. Then we need to apply a few drops of oil on each screw near the top, middle, and bottom. Take your brush and spread the oil evenly across the screws. Again, best thing to do is run the bed up and down to spread the oil out evenly. Preventative maintenance is a great way to keep your laser in tip-top shape and always ready to make you money. You have completed 90% of the recommended preventative maintenance already in this video. The only other maintenance needed to be done is to confirm that your laser and mirrors are aligned. I will leave a link in the description below to a video on how to accomplish this. The recommended preventative maintenance schedule is fairly simple. On a daily basis, it's important to keep your focusing lens in the head of your laser clean. It mostly depends on what you're cutting. Different materials burn and can foul up your lenses differently. Wood will burn dirtier than if you're cutting acrylic. You will need to determine your daily schedule based on how much you use your laser and what you're cutting. On a weekly basis, you will need to check your mirrors for dirt and debris. Another thing that should be done weekly is to clean out your catch tray. Remember, a clean catch tray is much safer. It's a huge fire hazard to have a lot of wood, paper, and debris in the bottom of it. On a monthly basis, it's recommended to lubricate your rails and the four bed lifting screws on the machine. Check your mirror alignment, clean your exhaust fan, and replace the water in your chiller. If you don't use your laser on a daily basis, your maintenance schedule will be different. You will have to come up with your own schedule by keeping an eye on each of the tasks that I've covered in this video and gauge for yourself when each one should be done. I hope that this video has been very informative and beneficial to you. As long as you follow the steps in this video when cleaning and maintaining the various parts of your Nova Series Thunder Laser, it will make your cutting and engraving much more efficient and let your laser have as much of a long life as possible. So I hope this helped and until next time, have fun with your laser.